Welcome to the Greenway with Mac, a channel dedicated to active transportation. This video is part of a series on the many Vías Verdes, or Greenways, of Spain. Today's Greenway tour is Via Verde del Mar, or Greenway of the Sea. This route is in the northeast direction, and we are starting across the street from Hotel Vora Mar. Immediately we go under a bridge once used by the railway. This appropriately named greenway hugs the cliffs for three and a half miles between the towns of Benicassim and Opresa del Mar. We are on the east coast of Spain, 165 miles south of Barcelona and 55 miles north of Valencia, and can be reached by a train from either location. The Via Verde del Mar is a three and a half mile long paved path with a total elevation change of about 200 feet. It's wide and safe, and I would recommend this path for all users, regardless of age or ability. Once on the path, there are no intersections to cross. At times, the slope at the edge of the path can be steep and far, but it's completely safe otherwise. On the right is Mirador El Canons. There used to be a train station here. Now it's a resting spot and provides stunning views looking back at Beni Kasim. Right away we get a preview of one of the most stunning characteristics of this greenway. There are several of these large trenches that were dug out for the railroad. area around the greenway is mostly untouched, but there are a few homes along the way. This neighborhood on the right is part of Opresa del Mar, and it's the only community on the ocean side of our path. Beni Kasim sits on the Costa del Azahar, which is the Arabic and Spanish word for orange blossom, and the name makes sense the eastern coast of Spain, and specifically in this autonomous region known as Valencian Community, have thousands of acres of orange groves. In cities like Valencia and Gandia, you will find orange trees to be the most common city tree. The weather in Beni Kasim is pretty great year-round. In July and August, it can get into the high 80s, but in the other months, it'll be in the 60s and 70s. The region swells with tourism during the summer months, so the path is likely to be a bit more crowded then as well. But in general, there seems to be enough space for everyone to enjoy this jewel of a greenway. The greenway is divided in two parts for nearly the whole route. The dirt section is typically reserved for walkers and runners, while people on wheels use the paved section. The dirt section can be a little bumpy, and the transition to the paved path can be uneven, so people with strollers commonly use the paved path as well. I'm not sure if these two realized it, but uh, they were stopping at the trailhead leading to the nude part of the beach down below. This tower on our right is one of several that was constructed in the 16th century to protect the coastline from Barbary pirates. This first one, the Colomera Tower, was built in 1553. It was designed at a height that allowed it to view the sea and its partner towers to the north and south, so they could alert each other of danger. The 
The path we are on was the Barcelona-Valencia line of the railroad, and it opened in 1865. At the time, beaches were not viewed as a driver of leisure and economic activity, so an embankment and frequent train service so close to the water was not viewed negatively. However, as things changed and the line needed to be upgraded, it was decided that the line would be moved further from the water and outside the current city center. This created an opportunity for what we would call rails to trails in the United States. In 2003, the rail stopped using this line, and by 2009, the paved path was opened. Immediately, the trail was popular with locals and has become a bucket list item for Greenway lovers. The right of way for the rail line is still somewhat intact, heading in the opposite direction, mostly complete with separated or protected bike lanes, and leads most of the way back to Castello. We took this route home, and it was three miles shorter than the route along the beach. While not as scenic, it was safe and direct. Unfortunately, I did not realize this at the time and did not record the route. Here's our route from Strava if you'd like to recreate it. While my seven-year-old was able to do it, it was not without some tears, so I don't recommend that length for everyone. I did record the scenic beach route from Castello to Benicassim, so make sure you are subscribed to see that video when it is released. A greenway like this really highlights how brilliant the rail-to-trail idea is. When a rail line is abandoned, these places can often become dangerous eyesores. Instead of leaving them to be unsafe and neglected, converting these paths into trails turn a liability into an asset. An embankment like this one keeps users safely away from vehicle traffic. In addition, rail lines are not typically very steep, so they work great as a comfortable place to ride for all users without too much effort. Do you live near a rail trail in your city? Tell me which one in the comments. Perhaps one day I'll make it there to spotlight it in a video. Down the hill to our right is a little restaurant near the halfway point of the Greenway. This restaurant had really good reviews with sandwiches and grilled meats on the menu. It looked like they were open daily except Mondays. I want to take a moment to highlight the Spanish Railways Foundation. They are the ones who create and promote the greenways. Their website, viasverdes.com, is an incredible tool for finding greenways in Spain and even has a tool that maps them into Google Maps for you. Their website and interactive maps tool have been super helpful in planning trips on the greenways. They have done a spectacular job with this world-class greenway. I did not realize it was to the right here, but this is where you would exit the Greenway to see the Corda Tower. This one is in better shape and was built between 1553 and 1554. The tower itself is 160 feet tall and was restored in 2011 to allow visitors to access part of the inside, but hours are limited. It looked like it was open for two hours, once or twice a week, so you will want to plan in advance. A third tower was part of this network called Torre del Rey, or the King's Tower, and it can be seen in Opresa on the tip of the peninsula. Up ahead is the Bovalar Tunnel, 
It stays lit year-round, and I thought it was one of the most memorable parts of the ride. If you aren't a tunnel person, especially if you're on foot, you can actually hike on either side of the tunnel. There is some signage just before the tunnel to help plan your route. This tunnel cuts through Mount Bovalar and is about 2,000 feet long. The area just north of Opresa del Mar has changed a lot in the last 50 years. I was told that this area was really fun in the 60s. The area north of Opresa was a little marshy and mostly untouched. People could pull up and camp on the beach and it became very popular. But in the 90s, developers built something called Marina Door. In short, they built condos, golf courses, and water parks, and tried to create a destination. Apparently, they wanted to create a Mediterranean Las Vegas. But the late 2000s economic crisis had other plans for it. Once we exit the tunnel, we are greeted by the Opresa Marina on our right. In the marina, there is a yacht club, a few restaurants, and a scuba diving center. And out on the horizon is our first view of Opresa del Mar. To the left is the rail line that replaced the one we are on. I couldn't have planned it any better if I tried. But I wanted to look at this bridge on the left, and I caught one of Renfe's medium-distance, high-speed trains heading south to Valencia. Just as with Beni Kasim, you can reach Opresa del Mar by train. The Ave, Avant, and long-distance high-speed trains do not let you bring your bike, unless it is a folding one. But the other ones will let you bring a regular-sized bike or scooter and for no extra charge. You'll need to book it in advance and select the bike option on Renfei's website. I'll have a link for you down below in the description. At the end of the greenway, you have two options. You can turn left and go through the tunnel, or turn right and get to the beach. Neither option has off-street or protected bike lanes, so you'll want to be more careful with vulnerable riders. Both options generally lead you to the same area. For walkers, there are plenty of sidewalks. The roads are very quiet on a Saturday in February, so we rode in the street to a restaurant in Opresa. This was a fun one to make, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to hit like if you want to see more videos like this one. And keep the fun going by subscribing to the channel. Keep moving, and I'll see you on the next Greenway.